let's look at TTL logic now. Uh, we kind of talked about logic families being divided into two primary categories, and that is TTL and CMOS. And these by themselves are not necessarily logic families. These are kind of architectures of how to create digital gates. Uh, and it, when they first started, you know, when they first started, you started with the name CMOS and you started with the word TTL. But then as things evolved and transistors were made smaller and smaller and power supplies shrunk, then little variants of each kind of popped up. And so you can kind of think about all logic families are broken into these two main categories, TTL and CMOS. And within that category, then there's uh, variants that have evolved over time. Now, there's other types, there's other ways to make logic, but these are by far the most dominant. CMOS is what's in use in almost every computer system today, every digital system today. TTL is important, though, because it's what started it all. So there's a lot of, there's a historical perspective in terms of learning about TTL, just so you understand the, where the acronyms came from and where kind of the part numbering schemes came from and just so that you know about it. Okay, so let's, let's take a look at it briefly and we're not going to go into the uh, device physics of this. We'll do kind of a cartoon device physics of it just to kind of know why, how it works and also just kind of for terminology. So the TTL comes from the acronym transistor to transistor. logic. And that refers to, I mean, TTL was the first way that people made logic circuits. And it was actually talking about a circuit made of transistors communicating to another circuit of transistors. So that's where TTL came from. Now within TTL, there's actually, it's very similar to CMOS in that there's two transistors that exist. Okay, The first one is going to be an NPN transistor. And it has a symbol like this and you have a PNP transistor, which has a symbol that kind of looks like this, or kind of does look like this, and, excuse me, that's not right, it looks like this, so the arrow is on the top right here, so the arrow is right here, I'll fill them in so it's clear where the arrow is, so the, the location of the arrow, is tell, it tells you whether it's a NPN or a PNP transistor. And the terminals on these are going to be, this is going to be called the collector on an NPN. This is going to be the emitter. <coughs> and it's very similar to the way that a CMOS transistor works. Current flows from the collector to the emitter. And you're going to control how much current flows by putting some signal on a control terminal. The control terminal in a, in a uh, NPN transistor is going to be what's called the base terminal. Okay? So then on a PNP, what you have is the emitter's up here, the collector's here, and then the base is right here. But it's a similar, it's very similar current's going to flow like this, and it's controlled by the base. Now, this type of transistor uh, has, a, has a little bit different uh, structure to it. Uh, so let's take a look at how it works. So let's, let's look at an NPN to start with. That'll, that'll be really the only thing we look at. What you do on an NPN is you take an N region of silicon or a semiconductor material and you put a P type here and then you put an N type here. And that's where NPM, NPN comes from. And if you remember, what happens is that these junctions form, the junction is, the, is where two materials of different types are connected together. So you have this junction that occurs and it forms a region where current is not going to flow inherently. So it, all, it isolates these from flowing. And that has to do with the electrons moving this way, the positive charges moving this way, and then they, they form an equilibrium because then they're surrounded and positive charges are surrounded by negative charge, so it doesn't know which way to go, so it kind of just stays put. Uh, negative charges surrounded by positive charge, et cetera, et cetera. So you get these regions in here that are <coughs> that prevent current from flowing. So this is kind of, you can think of it as, if I put the transistor over here, you, you kind of have the, this is going to be your collector, this will be your emitter, and then what you do <coughs> is in order to overcome kind of the inherent non-conducting regions right here, you actually put a, another control terminal here which is called the base, 
and you inject current into here. And what happens is that the electrons will flow and you'll, you're able to basically provide enough uh, energy to overcome these, <coughs> these regions, these junctions. So this is a junction <coughs> and this is a junction. And what happens is that the more current you put in there, the more you overcome these junctions and current will flow. All right, so that's that's like the most cartoon version of how an NPM transistor works, but it does explain some terminology. First of all, these type these transistors are called bipolar junk junctions. Bipolar junctions. The C in there. Transistors. Okay, so that is the acronym is BJT. And you say, what is a bipolar? Well, it's, well there's two junctions. And so the bipolar talks about how uh, they're polarized in terms of, so you had positive charge here, and it wanted to go this way, so it moved over to here, but then the negative charge went this way, and then they equalized out. But then down here, the positive charge jumped over here, and then it went like that. So you have two junctions, and they were bipolar. So they polarized positive went the one way, negative one the other. So that's kind of where the, the bipolar and then the junction, you had two junctions right here and it's a transistor because it's it's got two terminals where current, the flow of current between the two terminals is controlled by a, a control gate. Okay, so that's that's an NPN and you can imagine that a PNP acts exact opposite. You're going to have a PNP, it's also a bipolar junction transistor, it's also got all the, the same type of things where you have a control that the control terminal, which is the base that, that puts current in there to overcome those junctions. Okay, so it's a transistor. It works just fine. This is what the first transistors were. This is what the first logic gates were. So the, the, the beginning of digital logic was made with transistors that were bipolar, gen, bipolar junction. <clears throat> the NPN was the first transistor. The PNP came later. They operate in, a, in somewhat of a, a complementary way. And it's important to, to know about this because it's not only was it the first, so you always want to know about how, they, how people built the first of things because it sets the tone for everything that comes after it. But you also want to know about this because it's, it's the limiting factor of how TTL doesn't scale. So TTL just refers to you make a logic gate, you know, some logic gate talks to another logic gate. <coughs> They're both made with transistors. So it's transistors talking to transistors. Now there's a couple, there's are different architectures that you can make uh, with a bipolar junction approach, a TTL. One, one example, just a real simple one, would be an inverter where you could just use a simple BJT NPN and you could use a resistor. And what you do here in this situation is if it's on, it'll pull the output down to ground. If it's off, you have a pull-up network, which could be implemented with a PNP, or you could just use a simple resistor, uh, which would pull the output up. So there's a couple different architectures that you can use to create these gates. They, they somewhat mirror uh, the CMOS logics in terms of having a pull-up network and a pull-down network. And whenever you have a pull-up and a pull-down pull network, it's called a totem pull network. So it's two networks that are kind of in series. So you have a pull up and you have a pull down and the output is right there. <coughs> However, here's the more important thing about this. This right here, this current that goes into the base, the current that goes into the base, the current that goes into the base that is required at all times to keep this thing operational. Current will not flow unless current is flowing into the base. Now the base current is small relative to, it's usually 100 or 200 uh, times smaller than the actual current that's flowing through the main terminals of the transistor, but it doesn't matter how small it is because it's there. So this, this IB current, even if it's small, once you start building large digital systems that have 100,000 transistors or a million transistors, a million times something small is still something big. And that current right there is the reason that TTL logic is not used today for large digital systems. Because if you think about it, we have digital signals which are transitioning, and we know that we have to use energy in order to transition. So whenever we're going to move something, it takes energy. There's no way around that. We can try to minimize it, but it always takes energy. The problem is that when you're sitting here or here in these steady states, TTL logic consumes power. So you're sitting here, you're not doing anything but holding a logic high or a logic low, and you're consuming power. 
that is not the case in CMOS. In CMOS, if you think about it, you have two junctions. So we'll call this, let's say it's a P and a P and an N, so we're going to do, do a, uh, in a P-type transistor. You have an MO <coughs> here, and that O, that prevents DC current from flowing. So when you're in the steady state, no current flows. <coughs> that is key to the success of CMOS. You do not have power consumption, you know, in an ideal CMOS circuit, you do not have power consumption when you're in a steady logic state. In TTL, you do. So you consume power right here. So that's what kills off TTL because it just doesn't scale. It was great when you started with smaller systems that got to, you know, thousands of gates, <clears throat> maybe even tens of thousands of gates. But the power consumption itself just, just was, it didn't scale. It takes too much power just to hold them in one of the two states. Okay, so that's TTL. That's just a brief overview of what TTL logic is. Or